Welcome to this video. And in this video, we'll introduce the idea of a one form, including its definition and how it acts on vectors. We're going to look at the tangent and cotangent spaces and how these spaces are related to vectors and one forms using pictorial representations to support the ideas covered. So before I start, I'll just hide that and I can start. All right, so one form is a mathematical object used in differential geometry and tensor calculus. It plays a fundamental role in various fields, including general relativity, fluid dynamics, and electromagnetism. And to better understand it, we're going to look at tangent vectors, tangent space, and then cotangent space and one forms. And by contrasting it to you can see uh, it increases understanding of what these objects are. So let's start with a tangent vector. So a tangent vector at a point P on a manifold M is an object that can be thought of as a direction along which one can move from that point. In local coordinates, x1, x2, xn, a tangent vector V can be expressed as V equals VI ddxi. VI are the components of the vector and ddxi are the basis vectors in the local coordinate system. You notice that in a, we talk about local coordinate system because you can't assume on a manifold that you can have one coordinate system for the entire manifold. So you'll have coordinate patches and in one such patch, we have our local coordinates. Now the collection of all tangent vectors at point P forms a vector space called the tangent space. And we denote that as T subscript P M. So the tangent space of the manifold M at the point P. Right. Uh, cotangent space. So there's a dual space here. So it's the cotangent space at a point P denoted TPM asterisk is the dual space to the tangent space. It consists of all linear functionals that map tangent vectors to real numbers. So um, these one forms, linear functionals, are going to take a vector as an argument and contract with it to produce a real number. So a one form is an element of the cotangent space. It is a linear map that takes a tangent vector and returns a real number. All right, so let's have a look at some definition notation and then we'll get on to some diagrams. So given a tangent vector V at a point P on a manifold, a one form omega is a linear map. It's a linear map from the tangent space to the manifold at point P to the real numbers. Okay, such that for a vector V belongs to the tangent sp space to the manifold at the point P, omega of V is a real number. So omega, the one form, takes the vector V, contracts with it, produce a real number. In local coordinates, the one form can be expressed as omega equals omega i dxi. Okay, where omega i are the components of the one form and dxi are the basis one forms. Uh, now to picture this. All right, so here we have our manifold M. We have the tangent space to M at P up here, point P. At, at different points on this manifold, there'll be a different vector space, a different tangent space. Okay, so here V is a tangent vector. All right, now the cotangent space. So the cotangent space to M at P and Q, included two examples here. Uh, now point P is, is here and um, notice the thing to point out here, you have these parallel lines here, okay, and you have none here. This, okay, so what's happening here is you have the level curves, the function F if you like, a function of two variables that produce this surface from which I plotted this surface, okay, you have curves of level height or, or equal value of F. You can imagine those curves of equal value F around this surface. And down here where it's very, very steep, those um, level curves are closer together because it's steeper in this part. As we get closer to the top, the distance between these curves uh, increases. And when you reach the very pinnacle here, the global maximum of this surface, you have here a, at that point, there's no more change. There's no more increase or decrease in the value of F in the surface. And so you have this flat surface. There's no lines here. You're simply on one contour. So between these lines, if, you, if this were a topographic map, for instance, this would represent change in distance between, change in height between these lines. Okay, so here the lines are very close together because the height is rising rapidly due to steepness. The rate of change of F is steeper here or the rate of change of height is steeper here and not so steep up here 
until you get up to the rate of change is zero. All right, that's why there's no level curves there because you're on one level height, one contour of your topographic map, you're at the ultimate top height. There's no more change up or down, just at that point P, mind you. Down at point Q here, you can see that below it, the lines are spaced very closely together because there's a rapid change in, in the level curves, a rapid change in the value of, uh, in the curves that denote equal values of F, F being the function that from which we plotted this. Okay, so very, when they're very steep, they're very close together. And when they're not so steep, they're more spread out. So the cotangent space to M at P and Q. Notice the parallel lines in a 2D plane shown. These lines are locally parallel at Q, just like you have with the tangent space there. It's just local to that point for a small region. You can see it's locally parallel. And think of them as tangent one forms. Okay, these black lines here. All right, let's move on. Uh, okay, so action of a one form on a vector. That was the next one. So the action of one form on a vector. The action of a one form omega on a tangent vector v equals vi dx dxi is given by omega of v is omega i dxi vj d dxi equals omega i. Notice that here the basis one forms and the basis vectors, they are going to be subject to the Kronecker delta there. And so we're going to have the components multiplied together, omega i vj, omega i vj, Okay, and then the Kronecker delta will contract those to give us omega i vi. So this notation emphasizes that omega is a linear functional that picks out the components of the vector v, so to speak, picks them out, and combines them linearly, linearly with its own components. So you're going to sum this over i, which might go from 1 to n, depending on the dimension of the manifold. Now, uh, intuitively, you can think of this. One forms can be thought of as generalizations of gradients. And I was on the previous page, I was just talking about that. How the level curves were close together, lower down the diagram where the, di where the plot was steepest, and then the gradient of the plot was steepest. And then as we reached the top, the gradient at the very top of the point, at the very top of the manifold at point P was zero. All right, so you can think of them as gradients. I'll be doing that argument. And in fact, the next video that follows this focuses entirely on gradient as a one form. Now, if f is a scalar function, its differential df is a one form. Okay, so for example, in three-dimensional Euclidean space, if f is a function of x, y, z, then df is all of this. Here, df is a one form. Just as vectors represent directions and magnitudes, one forms represent gradients and rates of change. Now, one forms provide a natural way to measure how much a scalar function changes in a given direction. And we saw that a couple of slides ago on the plot of uh, f of x, y there. And we saw how the um, one form lines were close together, lower down where it was steeper, and then towards the top, there was no curves at all. It's all just a one le level height. Examples, if f is a smooth function on a manifold m, its differential df is a one form. Uh, for a point P and a tangent vector V at P, DF of V gives the rate of change of F in the direction of V. All right, so if we go to look at that, just let the difference between adjacent parallel lines in a cotangent plane represent a change of 10 units. So between two adjacent lines, okay, you have one contour, and that represents 10 units of anything height, whatever it is you want. Now, the closer the lines are together, the steeper is the gradient. So on this particular surface, it's, although I may not look at, it's flatter towards the lower part here and steeper as we go up around the edge here. Eventually, it'll flatten out over here. All right, so here's the cotangent space here at the point P. Here's our vector V at this point, and we're now going to walk up this slope. All right. It's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper as we go up. So remember how we take the one form df, okay, represents a sort of gradient, the rate of change, this object here, okay, and we act on it with a vector. So we've got a vector v and we're going to uh, change our location by four units. So one contour, two contours, three contours, four contours. Okay, so a vector represents both the direction and how many contours we're going to cross. 
Okay, we're going to contract that with the gradient, one form, df of v, and we're going to see that we're going to get 40 units of increase. Okay, so in a sense, we're going to df will be the rate, so each contour is worth 10 units, 10 meters, 10 kilometers, 10 light years, whatever distance you're measuring in. If you want to think of it as distance, it could be some other units of rate of change. And um, v will be our vector. So our vector will be at point P here. It's uh, pointing in this direction and it's going to uh, uh, move four contours. So four contours in this direction and the rate of 10 meters or 10 units of increase. So we have four times 10 is 40. All right, so in physics, the electromagnetic potential can be described by one form, A equals A, A mu. Yep, that's right. A mu dx mu. Sorry about that. I keep worrying I've missed slides. Where A mu are the components of the potential. Now, to summarize. So a one form is a linear map from the tangent space of a manifold to, to the real numbers. So providing a way to measure directional derivatives and gradients. And that will be the focus of the next video. Now, local coordinates, so one form is expressed as a linear combination of differentials of the coordinates. So we saw that earlier when we had the f was the f dx dx plus the f y dy and so on and so on in, in Euclidean space, but uh, you, whatever's appropriate for your manifold. And it acts on vectors to produce real numbers. Now, one forms are fundamental in differential geometry and play a crucial role in various physical theories. I'm going to pick this up again by specifically making a video on the gradient as a one form, and that'll be the next video. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that's um, helpful to everyone. Um, please let me know in the comments sec uh, section below if it is or isn't, and, um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.